Hey music fans, as a roadie I had this great opportunity to tour with all these bands. I wrote a book about my experiences on the road and it was the number one new release on Amazon and Bios and it's now sold millions of copies on Kindle. I'm Joel Roadie and this is my podcast, Party Like a Rockstar. This is my next group of episodes with my friend, a colleague, Mr. Rocco Reedy. I brought Rocco back on because you guys seem to really like him, which warms my heart because I really like him too. Uh, But some of the suggestions actually made sense. They were saying, you know, why didn't you show him this video and that video? And I reached out to Rocco and I said, would you like to come back on? And he said, I'd love to come back on. And so I had him react to a couple of those videos that I'm talking about. If you didn't see anything with Rocco Reedy, let me read you a little bit of his resume. He has worked as a tech, a stage manager, a production manager, and as a rigger. He's toured with Styx, Kansas, Cheap Trick, Ario Speedwagon, Loverboy, Robin Trower, Brian Adams, John Mellencamp, Aerosmith, Bon Jovi, the Scorpions, Kiss, MC, Hammer, Def Leppard, Eric Clapton, U2, Journey, Nine Inch Nails, Heart, Madonna, Smashing Pumpkins, Marilyn Manson, and many, many more. He's a great guy, and I think he's been enjoying these reactions, so I'm really glad that you, seriously, that you guys liked him. also want to throw a shout-out, a thank you, to the people here at Umi uh, Plum Liquor. They sent me this wonderful box. We'll open it together here. And inside is no doubt a... A nice bottle of plum liqueur. Look at that presentation. <laughs> All right, guys, doing my best here. And uh, appreciate it. I think it was really nice of them. If you guys want to learn more about their product, you can buy their product at Total Wine and Beverage or go to drinkyumi.com. Anyhow, let's jump into these and let's see what my friend Rocco Reedy has to say. So, my friend Rocco, you are back. I uh, I got scolded by a couple of people here. They said, you know, you didn't pick the best stuff for our friend Rocco here. And <laughs> one of them was this band, uh, Baby Metal. I, I selected a different performance. And so for Baby Metal, somebody said, you know, as a stage manager, it would be very interesting to hear what you have to say about some of the stages that they put together because they're, they're amazing. And oh, I, I absolutely. Thought that, I thought that was a very good suggestion. I think that made a lot of sense. So I selected a track that's one of their more recent releases. It's about a year old now, and it's called Metal Kingdom. We can jump into that together. Uh, you're, you're welcome to let me know about the song and everything else, but uh, <laughs> but as a stage manager, they wanted to hear your thoughts about uh, the stage theatrics and what you thought. So let's give it a go. Before you, you begin, listen. yeah, please. Is this, is this a live track, or is this their official music video i asked just because i want to know if there's an audience uh it is a live track okay cool okay cool let's do it
Holy, holy, holy. I am impressed. I got to tell you, you know, the very first video I think I ever saw for Baby Metal was a song called Chocolate, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And I, I, for the very first time I ever heard Baby Metal, I was just, you know, I thought they were great, but I thought they were cute. They've grown up. And boy, it shows in the, in this video. Are you there? Yeah, no, I'm totally listening to you. It's interesting. Oh, okay, okay. I could only see me. I couldn't see you. But oh. it, it's just, it, and the other thing that struck me is, you know, the, they have a great looking set there, you know, with the rising thing in the center. And I love the camera angles that the drone created, cutting through the middle of them and everything. But yeah. I don't know if you noticed or not, but they only use three colors, red, green, and blue, the primary colors. And the combination of those, you can create any color with them. You know that from, you know art class back in grade school and but by using that it just kept the whole look very stark so that you're looking at, at the beauty of the costumes and you know the tridents that they're holding and the stuff like that but you focus on just the intensity on their face you know and, and I, I wish i knew what the lyrics actually meant but you can just tell that they mean business you know yeah they're not singing about, oh, I'm in love and I'm going up the hill and there's flowers and, de-. you know, it's, uh, there's something on their mind and they're getting the point across. And man, it came off of a lot of class. These girls have really upped their, gra- upped their game a lot. I enjoyed well, what's that. What's interesting to me, and this will turn into a question for you, but what's interesting to me is it's such a large scale production and yet they're still able to create I'm going to say that intimacy between them and the audience, they're, they're, they're able to keep that connection so very strong. Yeah. Um, of all the performers you've worked for, who's the first that comes to mind who was the very best at keeping that connection with a massive, massive audience? Well, you know, it's it depends on how you look at it. As far as somebody who gets the audience right there in the palm of their hand, without a doubt, Mick Jagger. You know, oh. because he, he would, you know, be up there performing, but he would be playing to the last person in the last row up there. And in my years of, of working with you two, Bono was the same way. He could get an audience right there in the palm of his hand. But he, you know, he would be the first to tell you that he learned from people like Mick, people yeah. like David Bowie. He was another one who could get him right there. Phil Collins from Genesis. He could get the audience right there. But that's what it takes is the intimacy that they get by having their audience that close. And that, that runway going out into the middle with the oh. riser going up and then performing on that puts them right in the center of the audience. Yeah. You know, physically as well as emotionally. So that yeah. that was very impressive. I, I loved Okay, cool. All right. There's another track here. I also got uh, yelled at about. <laughs> you remember Nightwish? We played that Nightwish track last time. Yeah. The the singer of the band was a woman who's named uh, Florianson, and so I've selected here a track by Florianson for you to listen to that you know, but you haven't heard her sing it. So but it, but she's uh, departed from no. Nightwish. No, no, she just does stuff solo. Oh, little, okay. Yeah, a bit of fun, you know, a bit of fun. Yeah. So, okay, let's jump to that one, and you can let me know what you think. All righty. <laughs> Hey, the podcast is over. What are you still doing here? Well, while you're here, like and subscribe. Thanks.